everybody. It is April and I'm in my craft room. And today we are going to do some down and dirty quilting. My granddaughter carries with her to daycare a blanket and that blanket has Jimi Hendrix on it. I have no problem with Jimi Hendrix at all, but for a five-year-old girl, she should be carrying unicorns or rainbows or Minnie Mouse or anything. No, not anything. I am taking matters into my own hands and I am going to replace the Jimi Hendrix blanket with something more appropriate for a five-year-old girl. I'm going to whip up a quilt. It's going to be a panel, a backing, no binding, and I'm thinking I'm gonna put a little bit of a special touch on it and I will show you that when I get to that point. So, let's get started. Let's get down and dirty. It is a cute little unicorn. What I want to do is I'm going to trim off the selvage from each end. All right, selvage is coming off. And then you can see how I roll. <laughs> this is how I roll. All right. I want to put my backing on right side down on top of what's going to be the front of my quilt. It could even be the other way. This could be the back. As long as the right sides touch, it's all good. What I'm going to do, this is a little bit longer than my noodle and that is okay. So to get this started, I'm going to put it on my cool noodle and I'm going to have the right side out so that when I unroll it, the right side will be exposed or the pretty side of the fabric. And to make sure it stays in place, I will put pins, I know I don't use pins often, but I do use pins when I'm using noodles. I'm going to stick a pin in it and I'm going to make sure that I've got this rolled up straight, which is, you know, fairly important if it isn't going to be a life or death situation if it's not. And then I push out my fabric as I roll. How cute is this? It's a unicorn clouds and rainbows. I've got it wrapped up. And the good thing about this is you put a pin in it and it can just stay just like this for as long as you need it to stay just like this. I am going to put my unicorn like this because this fabric is directional. See how my unicorns and rainbows are this way? I don't want my unicorns and rainbows on the back to be this way or to be this way. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to put it down right here. And what I'm going to be doing is sewing all around the outside, leave an opening so the inside will be the right side so I can turn it right side out. And I'm going to line it up pretty evenly up here. And then I'm going to roll this out. All right, so I'm going to roll it out. Let's put a pin in it so that I can flip it over and then cut 
the edges so I don't have that selvage in the seam. I'm going to take the pins out. And I'm going to cut away the excess fabric. Gracie wanted to say hi. Hi. All right, dude, I gotta do my pool noodles. No, you're not laying down here, dude. Ah, you can lay down right there. Hopefully you can ignore the background noise of the furnace or air conditioner or whatever you'd want to call it because I've got a granddaughter that's going to be here really soon and I got to get this done. So to continue, I have my panel and this doesn't have to be a panel. It can just be some fabric print that you like face down on my backing and my backing is face up. So right sides are touching just so happens that I had some batting wrapped around a pool noodle that I had used. And what I'm going to do is, yay, the furnace went off. I'm going to use this for this quilt. I'll take my batting and I think I'm going to start out at this end and I'm going to line it up. Well, then you can't see what I'm doing. So what good does that do me? You're going to line it up with the edge of your panel and batting is sticky. So you want to be careful to kind of place it. I'm just going to kind of, you know, smooth it out and try to get the majority of the overlap on this opposite side. And I just kind of, you know, pat it out. If you can't get it to pad out, lift and lift and move, kind of. I'm going to put my opening on the bottom of the unicorn. It doesn't really matter where you put it. It will be hidden when you get done with this. I am also using a different seam allowance because a quarter inch, because these aren't exactly even, is going to cut it too close for me. Down and dirty, remember, down and dirty, take no prisoners, get it done. So here, this will allow me to hold on to it. So here we go. I'm going to forward stitch. Now I'm gonna back stitch. disclosure. So I was sewing on this side, but I could feel that my batting was quite a bit back from my fabric. Okay. So here you can see, you know, batting is back here and you want to make sure you get your batting and your panel. What I did while I was stitching is I felt with my finger for my batting before I got there and made sure that the edge of my foot was along the edge of my batting. And that made it so that all of this went to the batting and through the panel. Now, I'm gonna check to make sure that I got that panel everywhere I went because again, I was not careful. I didn't spend a whole lot of time putting this together because that's the whole point of this is down and dirty, quick, get it done. This is not going to be in a quilt show. Like here, I may have missed my panel right here. This is the edge of my panel right there. And that line is right there. So I'm going to go just stitch over here a little bit just to make sure that I've got my panel all the way in there. But I'm going to make sure I don't have any other areas where that's a problem. And here's my opening right here. And this is how I'm going to turn it right side out. 
Okay, now what I wanna do is, just like you would do on a pot holder or anything else that you would sew this way, you want to trim the corners so that when you turn them right side out, they won't bunch up in there. I've cut all four corners. So here is the big reveal. So let's, let me find the opening. And also I'm going to top stitch because I've got this opening that I want to close and top stitching allows me to do that easily. Now I'm going to go the furthest away from my opening first. So this corner seems to be the furthest away. I'm gonna turn it inside out and start bringing that here. Once you turn it inside out, all your fears will disappear because it will look so cute and you won't be so obsessed with the fact that, oh my gosh, this isn't gonna be straight. Because once you wash it, all your sins will disappear. It will be okay. And that newborn baby or that five-year-old granddaughter does not care if it is perfect. They care that it came from you and that it has a unicorn on it mainly and rainbows because rainbows are my granddaughter's favorite color. I've pushed out my corners. Let me show you. Now, how cute is that? And you're not worried that this line is crooked or this seam isn't perfect. That's not why we did this. We did this because we want to make a little girl happy. This makes me happy. I don't know about a little girl, but I'm, I'm happy. Now, next step. So this seam on the side, you want to flatten it out. And this is where we're going to top stitch. But what we're gonna do first is we are going to press it so that we can, when we do top stitch it, this is nice and thin or as thin as we can make it. And the beauty of the way we did it is this kind of just falls into place. <laughs> I say that, I'm having trouble making it fall into place. Usually when you pull it, it will just fold over. And essentially it should look like the stitching that I did around the rest of the quilt once I top stitch it. But I'm also gonna put clips in it just so I can make sure, again, I don't want to have any batting popping out. And I want it to look like it was just part of the, the rest of the quilt. As you can see, I am interrupting Oliver's nap. Take this and I'm just gonna press it on the edge just so that it makes it easier to sew. First thing I wanna do is I want to close up this end. I want to warn you that when you decide that you want to do something quickly, Murphy's Law kicks in. And Murphy will try and slow you down. Don't get frustrated. Just tell him to take a hike and just keep plugging away because you will finish. It just might take a little longer. And the reason that I say this is because of the issues that I ran into. Can you see these god awful stitches? Yeah, I mean the whole thing. But because of the special thing I'm going to do at the end, it wasn't that big a deal that that happened when I was top stitching around the outer edge. And you can see how far I got over from the top stitch. But I don't want it that tight for the rest of the quilt. 
digging through my drawers, I happened to find a purchase that I made, and it is a Fonz and Porter chalk marker and refill. If you get one of these, they have these little teardrop looking things. They look like this. You can get different colors. Before you insert it in the marker, take this little plug out because if you don't, your marker won't work. So I'm going to mark at two and a half inches all the way around because I do want to have that same line like I have. Now, I don't know how well this chalk stays, but we'll find out because it looks a little grainy, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna go sew. First, let me say I am a Fonz and Porter chalk marker fan. I thought I may have yellow on my front. I don't even see any on the front of me. So, and it's on here long enough that I can follow the line. So on the Fonz and Porter chalk marker. So I've sewn all the way around and through the middle. Well, my lines going this way. Now I need to do my lines this way. First, I want to point out, so if you look here, it is all puckered right through there. So what you have to do as you are sewing, you have to push your fabric towards the needle so that there's just a little bit of fabric that gets pulled back because essentially with the walking foot, I am pushing all of my fabric down towards the end of this. Because I turned this inside out, there's nowhere for it to go. Here she is. Now for my surprise, just to give this a little extra special something, I am going to put one of my favorite things on the edge, and that is chenille it. I just have a little bit of chenille it. I went to Hobby Lobby, and this has been a while back. Normally their chenille it is $8.99. I just happened to be in the clearance section, and they had reduced it to 89 cents. How could I possibly resist 89 cent chenille it? I did leave one for somebody. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I bought a whole bunch of chenille it. Now I have to choose the color. So I've got this green, which would be kind of a contrasting color. I've got a darker pink, uh, yellow. Yellow would be okay. Or a lello, as my granddaughter calls it. Here's another blue. I always do pink. I'm using lello. Chenille it is very easy to apply. I am going to put it on the outside edge, on the front and on the back. And that's why I wasn't concerned with my stitching on the back because I knew that I could cover up with the chenille it and you wouldn't even know that I had stitching issues. And you just lay it down on your quilt. I'll start it here and I am just going to match the edge of the chenille it to the edge of my quilt and then sew it all the way around. And then when you wash it, it gets all fuzzy. So let me attach this and I'll be back. My quilt is done. If there are any quilt police watching this video, you didn't see anything. I straight line quilted. I added the chenille and as you can see, it 
chenilled across the top and the bottom. I put it on both sides. So it kind of makes the edge special since I didn't put a binding on it. And it took probably longer than it took me to do a three yard quilt. But I blame Murphy on that because I was in a hurry and whenever I get in a hurry, something always happens. I had my problems with using my walking foot for the first time on my machine. I had some ugly stitches that you saw, but it all worked out and I have a cute little quilt to show for it. I also used that same technique where you put right sides together, sew around the outside, flip it right side out, close it. But this time I used it on Anna and Elsa, Anna and Elsa, Elsa and Anna. But I put Minky on the back. I did not put batting in the middle. Diane and Dee and I had a discussion about that. Diane said do it, Dee said don't, and I decided not to. And then we found out Dee wasn't really even sure what Minky was, but that's okay. I've made a blanket with flannel and this soft fabric on the back, and it turned out just fine. I also practiced my feathers. I did do a top stitch, and then I stitched where the border lines were on the fabric panel. And here you can see where I did some of my feathers. Now, of course, I crossed over once, and it's at the very top. And I also made my feather look more like a moon, of course, at the very top. Why I couldn't do this below, I don't know. But there you have it. Or you might not be ready to take on a full-size quilt. And if that is the case, there is no reason that you cannot take a panel or a yard of fabric that you really like and use this technique. It's something to get your feet wet. It's not hard. It's just something to kind of break you in slowly. You don't have to do straight line quilting. You don't have to give it to anybody. You can make it for yourself. You can make it for your animals, your pets. I guarantee you that Oliver or Gracie might be laying on this if I let them. So the options are endless for this particular cheat. I'm going to call it a cheat. It's When I say quilting, it's kind of cheating, but it could be your first foray into quilting and you may find that, ooh, you know, I can do this, so maybe I can make blocks and piece them together and then put batting behind them and that kind of thing. I want to thank everyone for watching. I did draw for the quilt that I was giving away in my last video and Donna Shackelford was the winner. So I will be finishing that quilt up and sending it her way. I'll have some future drawings like that. I will not let anybody know that I'm going to have them and I will intersperse them anywhere into the video just to make sure you're watching. So, you know, you got to watch the whole thing now because you might miss it. But wait, there's more. I almost forgot to tell you that washing this, you know, where I had that pucker and that pucker looked, it didn't look good. It was pretty puckery. It's gone. So the dryer, which is what I think shrinks up your fabric the most, it's a quilter's best friend. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. Um, blah, 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 blah. If it turns out that it's not big enough for her, for her, can you tell I'm from Kentucky? And if this, this, yep, that's easy for me to say. Or you may just be afraid to do a quilt Okay, that's it really.